<laughs> the killer to come in and stick it on his face. <laughs> Hey, Maniacs. Hey, Maniacs. It's Midsummer Maniacs. Midsummer Maniacs is a comedy recap podcast dedicated to the ITV series Midsummer Murders. Each week we dig into an episode of the show, including the murders, the ma'am, the loonies, and everything else we love this week. Midsummer Murders, a grain of truth. Season 23, episode 3. You know, you say that whole thing like you've said it before. Yes. Like you don't even really take a breath or anything. No. Nope. Like you know it by heart. Yes. Good job. It's on my screen right here. <laughs> it's been 150 some episodes. I hope you have it down by now. 152. Getting into the big it's numbers. It's funny that they we started that pretty early on, but there are some episodes where we don't have it and it's noticeable. That's weird. Yep. I'm Mark. I'm Sarah. If your kids are old enough to maintain a sourdough starter without letting it die, they can listen to this podcast. Wait a minute. I think I can't listen to this podcast. Yes. <laughs> I've never trusted myself. I was like, I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> I don't know. I I could. I, I kept children alive. I've kept many, many if pets alive. If your children are smart enough to go outside with a clipboard and say, yes, that is a mill. Check. They can listen to the podcast. They can listen to the podcast. So we did a survey this week. Yeah. Our number one responded to survey ever. Nice. And our longest survey. Well, we really appreciate everybody who took the time to fill it out because it really does help us. We we love you guys and we want to make sure that whatever it is we keep doing, it is what you want to listen to, that it's worthwhile for all of us. So we wanted your opinion. So thank you so much for taking the time. Yes. So regular listeners, people who are up to date, the people in the U.S. are watching Midsummer with us right now. What you're going to get next week is a, a, a kind of mini and a maxi all together because mm-hmm. we're going to do a mini of the survey results and announcements that come out of that. And then we're going to do the regular episode next week. So the the people like in the UK and in Australia and stuff like that, who don't listen to us, even though who we, aren't current with us they, because they aren't current, they aren't with, current with the episodes. Yeah. We're going to release the survey stuff alone yes, as plus, a little mini episode just so they can listen to that. Plus we had someone say that they were still in the just under 100. They hadn't got here yet. Yeah, so, so it wouldn't make any sense yeah. for them to listen to so, but they a season to 23 know. episode, but they want the results of the they survey. They want the results, yeah. so we'll, we'll... So you'll hear that next week. That will all make sense. You know what doesn't make sense, Sarah? What? Why do we not live in England? If We've we talked li- about that many times, if but no, we, we don't. If we lived in England, we could go to cool stuff. Well, yeah, like... Like the My Jericho, that's the, it's, that's the name of the event... It is a Morse and Oxford celebration on Saturday, the 4th of March from 2 p.m. onwards. Oh, they're going to party into the night? They are going to party into the night. Because Morse, you know, oomch, 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 (laughs) oomch. Includes a celebration at St. Bonabas Church in Jericho, Mm. which is, it appears in the the show. Yeah. With surprise guests. So 2 o'clock, they're doing walking tours. Uh, at four o'clock, they're going to have a drink in the Morse bar at the Randolph Hotel. Is it like the anniversary of Morse or something? Why now? I don't, I don't know. Cause it hasn't been on for a long time. I would totally go to that if we were in England. Yep. You get to meet Mark Davies. He's one of the guests. Celebrations of a new book that's coming out. And then there's a celebratory meal at the Old Bookbinders Ale House. Why can we not go there every (laughs) single day? We would totally go there. At the corner of Canal Street and Victor Street in Oxford. Well, if any of our UK-based listeners can go and you do go, we want to see pics. Yes. And we we want to know who the special guests were. See pics and know the special guests. We would do an on-site if we lived... Where's my teleporter? Yes. Why do we not have a teleporter? I saw that and was like, oh, maybe if this is in like two years, we can go and, you know, no, no. It's It's one of those things that makes me go. It's like Uh six weeks away. Uh Oh. Yeah. (laughs) Well, thanks for bringing it up and rubbing it in. Appreciate it. 
Uh, speaking of disasters, <laughs> this episode was originally released on the 26th of December when we did the mini, and we had no water. Yeah. <laughs> it was a, a Boxing Day celebration. It was a water-free Boxing Day. We had gallons of water. Yeah, we did. That we filled at our friend's house. <laughs> Where Thank we you. showered. <laughs> we were a bit too lally. It, I think it's the oh, shortest. Honey. We're always a bit yes. too lally. <laughs> it was it was the shortest mini, and we had crazy stuff to talk about, which only gets crazier. Mm -hmm. We'll get there. Did find a couple of things to watch like a maniac. Oh yeah, watch like a maniac. Like the hidden headband. That was the first thing we asked people. The, what the technical impossibility about the live stream from the mill? Yep. The punny name that leaves comments on videos. The victim's discovery that is a mystery, or maybe sort not. Of. We've got an accusation about that one. Yep. Uh, what popular show has a sneaky crossover? But we have to start with the last Watch Like a Maniac, which is what U.S. charity has a clever connection to this episode and how. And oh boy, it is quite the story. So we started that story in the mini off with the following revelation that we had discovered something that we had no idea about. Yeah, and because that, right at the beginning of A Grain of Truth, season 23, episode three, the very first thing you see is footage from a live stream from Larkton's Mill, and they have the URL at the bottom of the screen, which, which is they a, should. A, an internet web address. Larkton'sMill.co.uk. So you now, being you, of course. Now, I look up all the Pause the show, the show, whipped your phone out, including, and looked it up. Including... Midsummer travel, travel. Midsummertravel.co.uk, <laughs> which goes to our website. Yes. But where did this one go? So the when you go to that URL, the first thing that comes up is it gets rerouted to another website. And this is all safe for those of you who haven't done it. But Absolutely. Please, but you should do it now. It comes up and <laughs> it says... We love Midsummer Murders, and we can't believe the show made up a published domain without actually buying it. Yeah, so they bought it. These folks at Ballydeden Farm. Yes. In Washington State. And now it says other things that we'll get to. Okay. So we were like completely surprised by this. We're like, wow, Whoa! that's something we would do. Because <laughs> we have. Only strange people like us would do <laughs> something like that. So you emailed them. So I sent them this email. Now, in in email, I, I you know I want to come across as as a person who is you know not like oh we're a famous internet celebrity because we're not. <laughs> so, so I was like, w this is. I'm Mark and Sarah from Mystery Maniacs, a podcast, formerly Midsummer Maniacs. I'm guessing you know why we're emailing you. <laughs> and on the week of the com, uh, uh, we talked about the Grain of Truth episode. We we saw your clever little trick, and we just wanted to know the story behind it because we knew they had to be big Midsummer fans, or yes. why would they have bothered to why do would it? They <laughs> Two hours later, yeah. we get back what may be one of the best email address emails we've ever gotten. Yes. The first line is just all capital letters that says, yes. <laughs> and then it says, this paragraph is awesome. This paragraph says, we've been waiting for this email for a month. Literally, my first thought when I saw the domain was available was, I bet if I buy this, Mark and Sarah will see it. <laughs> <laughs> my wife, also Sarah, are huge fans of the podcast. They're All maniacs, the best people too. are named Sarah. By They're the way. maniacs, Just yes. too. So they are Sarah and Ansel. Mm -hmm. And they run... Uh, a farm called the Ballydidian. Ballydidian. Ballydidian on Whidbey Island outside of Chicago, Chicago uh, outside of Seattle, Washington. It looks gorgeous. It's there. a farm animal rescue farm. Yep. So they, all the all the animals there have been rescued from 
other farm scenarios. They have, and they get those animals get to live out their whole lives, old age there, never worrying about being somebody's dinner. Yep, hundred rescued animals from chickens, ducks, geese, sheep, pigs, and cows. You guys, you really gotta at least check out their Instagram and watch the video that they have that introduces the farm. The, it's a, it's so beautiful. They're lovely and cute. Yes. They are absolutely wonderful. And there are kind of people. So <laughs> obviously. <laughs> so Ansel and, and Sarah, we're gonna send them some merch. Yeah. We asked for their uh their sizes. <laughs> and now on the on the website, if you go there, it says as heard on Mystery Maniacs episode 152. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Which is what we're recording yes. right now. <laughs> How does he keep doing this? <laughs> he basically bought the URL before the episode was available. Yeah. And now he's putting stuff on the website for a podcast episode that hasn't happened yet. I'm going to say as a web designer, it's a lovely little website. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely gorgeous. So that's the answer They have a to... lovely little daughter, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And piggies that are furry piggies. Yes, furry little piggies. And so, yeah, that was the the, the last Watch Like a Maniac that's question insane. was in reference to them. Because, man, they're quick on the draw. I'm so impressed with I, them. They're so awesome. I read that email to Sarah, and we were both in stitches. Yes. Because <laughs> Because that, that's insane. These are our people. <laughs> and they're doing something really cool. Yes, so. absolutely. Are you ready to talk about a grain of truth? Yes. So uh, I don't know why we both say that in a Scottish accent. Truth. In Lower Blissingham? Yes. It, there is no bliss in Blissingham. No, there no. is crazy chaos. There is a nice little logo. The mill has a nice logo. Mm-hmm. I wish I knew what it said. And How I wish- could they make the logo? The fake live stream and not think we should buy that URL. I don't know. I cost like $5 a year. I mean, come on. I I can only think that there's a problem with them buying URLs for companies being a company, but I don't know. No, there isn't. You can buy anything you want. We can buy .co.uk and we're not even (laughs) in the UK. There's no reason why they couldn't have done it. They didn't have to put anything on it. We should put a link to the mids on the Midsummer Travel site to the farm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's just ah, uh, somebody had it on their to-do list and didn't do it, and they're yep. kicking themselves. Yeah, absolutely. So this is a water mill that is owned by a husband and wife, Tom and Chrissy Larkton. Now, do we want to talk about this now or later? Why does Chrissy want anything to do with we this? We got to talk about that later. Okay. Okay. We'll talk about it later. So we'll, they, we'll they kick it later. They're announcing the opening of their 100% organic mill. And and they're walking towards their cafe. You mean their food truck? Which is a bit of a crap cafe. The trailer in the grass? <laughs> yes. And That's then, not a cafe. I'm sorry. And then it suddenly cuts. Which is what you can't do in a live feed. No, you can't. You can't do that. They don't have multiple cameras. They can't. Even if they do, you can't just, he can't teleport live. They, like they did that. teleport the length of the pond and we'll get there. They we still, know the length of the pond and we know all sorts of math. That's about. right. <laughs> oh, just wait. They wear, they're both wearing like tan and white, like like they have to dress as the color of their product or it's something. It's kind of cult. Kind of culty. It's weird. Like the, there's a scene where you see the two of them walking into their house yeah. and their house is cream and tan and they are cream and tan yeah. and the mill is cream and tan. And it's like, ugh, do you have to dress like your product? Like that would be a problem. I mean, what if you make cheese? What if you make Swiss cheese? You're just going to wear holy clothes, holy clothes and have a holy house. Like you have to match it. I'm a vineyard. So I, I only wear purple. Yes. Purple and, and light shades of green. To we grow my- mustard exclusively <laughs> and corn. <laughs> we wear yellow and live in a yellow house. <laughs> Cause that would be an American thing. I think. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Our house is a giant corn cob. Yeah. <laughs> It's just strange. But with them, they do a great job, though, of making this look like the kind of live stream that you see from a business. They almost look like 
TV show hosts. You Almost. Know? And the production quality on live streams now on some of these things is oh, it's, amazing. It's super good. Yeah, it, it can be. It and, and you can switch from one camera to another, just not with the same person in shot who can't be in both places at well, the yeah. same time. <laughs> So Tom and Chrissy own the, the the mill has been in Chrissy's family since 1821. Yeah. And Tom is a celebrity chef of some sort. He only makes one thing, sourdough he, he bread. He has no credentials. No, he's of, no credentials. Being... But they also have staff, of course. They've got Gabriel, who is their master miller, and his oh, apprentice, Claire. Gabriel's also another thing. What is he again? Oh, yeah. The Insane. killer. Insane. <laughs> If By you the didn't way, know, this is spoiler, a spoiler podcast. Yes, yeah, we forgot to say that. Yeah. Ricky, the reformed thief baker. He's not reformed, though. Not really. He he is he takes a douchebag yob to a higher <laughs> level in this episode episode. So much so that later on he wears a headband. That yes. was one of your watch like yeah. a maniacs. Yeah, he's uh Unappetizing, as far as I'm concerned. I don't know why Claire's into him. So we've got the whole mill crew. I don't crew. know why Claire's in this episode. I don't so. either. <laughs> to pick the wrong seeds, I guess. So we've got the cl- the the mill crew, right? Yep. The Larktons, Gabriel and Claire, Ricky. And then we have the pub crew. Yes. At the High Women Inn. Yes. Which is Silas and Denise. And their group of people. And and their blackies. I don't know. Like, there's 500 su- of them. Their like, support group. According uh, yeah. to one of the newspaper articles, but they aren't there. And then we have the Signoris. Yeah. Maria, her son, Bobby, and... Michael, her dead son. M- Michael, who died before the episode. Yes. Right? And they run... But his hair... Well, sorry. His wig lives Wow. <laughs> It's really bad wig. I'm on. emo. It's 2003. I don't know what that hair was supposed to be. Uh, I watched the the attack scene at the end, the recap, mm-hmm. and I watched very closely to see if his wig shifted <laughs> because, <laughs> like, it's almost like he <laughs> kind of straightens it on his head and then goes and gets her. It's horrible. And so Maria Signori has Maria's Cafe, an Italian cafe, right? That the worst no establishment in midsummer history. Do we see a single customer in Maria's no, the entire not episode? Not a single customer. Not one. Their chalkboard is all wrong. They close and open at weird times. Well, they have no customers. They Why have not? No customers. I, There's two people there, and she's like, "Where did you go?" And he's been gone for hours. Yes. Like, <laughs> how do you sneak out of a one room thing with your mother? Oh, and Maria is absolutely a stereotype. I'm almost forty, and really the gay. Yes, which is fine. Which, Mind your own I business, mom. Feel so bad for him. For Bobby. Yeah. He's a victim. And she's a stereotype that is just glued on. The Italian mother, Catholic, overly worried, I worshiping a child who's not there anymore. Yeah, I, like, I just don't, it, she just doesn't need to be there. I didn't look up the actress because I didn't want to know if she was actually Italian or not. Because if she is Italian, I feel sorry for her. Mm-hmm. And if she isn't Italian, I feel sorry for her. I feel sorry for Italians. Yeah. Like, <laughs> just, mm. Wow. And then there is the farm. Yes. That has the dad and the son and the no mom. Nathan and Jack. This is another episode of Missing Parents with no explanation. We don't need to know. I guess. All we need to know is that Jack is old and sick and Nathan has to run the farm. He is a one-man farm. Yes. You know? Well, like you know. Like Silent and, uh, Silas and Denise are a two, two-person pub with a full menu. By the way, uh, but no one. Well, in the she's kitchen. got time to bake cakey things, ride a horse, and ride run a, a horse, pub, and maybe? get people to sign a petition sudden about the mill. Horse person, <laughs> <laughs> sudden horse person. That makes it sound like she's a, a oh, like a, a centaur. Not a centaur. That isn't that a bull? No, that's a minotaur. Yeah. Oh, you make it sound like she's a sudden centaur. That <laughs> she's a sudden horse person. Like. Well, like it, behind the bar, I don't know she has a horse's body that you just can't I don't see. No, about those are get hallucinations. <laughs> Sorry, illusions. I mean hallucinations. I mean illusions. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, hold on. Let's talk about the cake. Okay, the cake happens first. So 
there is a cake that appears out of no, like we're going to get to the cake, but it bothers me that the cake appears in their office and no one has seen anybody putting it in there. their home. Yeah. Not in the business. It's in their home. Yeah. In a big gift box. And you open it up and it has a giant knife. Yes. It comes with its own knife. <laughs> I think we're supposed to assume that that Chrissy thinks it's a gift from Tom. Yeah. But it says, slice me. Yeah. What would you do? Um, okay. A number of times in my, in my notes for this episode are the following all capitalized words. Stop touching evidence. <laughs> <laughs> so you come home from work. I was the last person in the house before you. There's a big box on the counter with a big ribbon. It has your name on it. Yes. Do you open it? Oh, yeah. Okay. You open it. And there's a rule at wheel. Oh, sorry. No. That's another episode. <laughs> Inside, there's a cake with a big knife, and it says, slice me. I'm slicing that because it's my home. Yes. And you would assume it was from me, right? Yeah. Or that I knew about it, at least. I guess. So she does. Yeah. What's important is that she slices it exactly the right way. It's perfectly the right way. So it's almost like it falls apart. Yeah. So like this, the fondant is holding the cake together. This prop is a piece of styrofoam with the word curse written in it, covered in fondant. With an important layer of fresh pig blood underneath. I don't think it's actually fresh pig blood. But it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be. Yes. Not cooked pig blood. No. Because it would be a different color and consistency completely. Yes. This is raw blood. Yes. What? Ew. What is the pub owner lady trying to accomplish with this cake? I, she's supposed to scare them into closing. So Chrissy cuts the cake and goes, oh, no, we're cursed. Stop everything. Shut it down. We're done. Titles. <laughs> End got, of episode. We got a cake. The end. So they do the cool thing here with the titles where they tell a story. Mm. Right? You see the mill. wheel and the the gears, and then the flour, then buns and bread, and it's then the, the process shop. of flour. Yes. Hey. Meanwhile, he's touching evidence or worse. It it looks to me yeah. like when Chrissy tells Tom, by the way, just as a side note. I don't think anybody in Midsummer should ever be named Tom again. Yes. Tom is w Tom Barnaby. W that name should be retired from names. Much like, okay, the number 99 it's for confusing. Wayne Gretzky is retired for the entire league of the Nobody NHL. can be number 99. No one can be 99. Nobody else can be Tom. Greatest hockey player of all time. Yeah. The same should happen with Tom. Yes. The name should be retired. I don't care what the last name is. Yep. No Toms. No Joyce's for that matter. Yeah. I no don't think Tom. we have to worry about Cully's coming back. No Toms, no Joyce's. So Tom sees the cake. Chrissy's obviously upset about it, as you would be. Mm -hmm. He touches it, gets the red stuff on his finger, and I swear he tastes it. It is really close. If he's not... He's smelling it. He definitely it's, brings it up to his face. It is near his face. To which I said, stop touching <laughs> the evidence. Oh, it gets worse, though, because after he brings his hand up near his face, yes. for whatever reason, he, he rubs his fingers together like, ew, yep. and then puts his hand on Chrissy's shoulder yep. on her dress. He smears <laughs> it all over her dress. Welcome to Carrie. <laughs> it's like... Did any of the kids ever surreptitiously wipe their face or their nose on you, oh, when, you the when they were little? They're like, they're like, mm. I love you. I lean on you. Smear. Smear. It's like that. It's it's yeah. like he's, oh, honey, it's okay. Can, can I get this off my hand on your shoulder? <laughs> now, Stop it. Now, I want to say they screwed up with the Earl and the farm took it great advantage of that. But they did really well with the handheld phones and the screens and the pictures in this episode yeah yeah they have a good grip on it's easy to read the social media yep. and stuff and you can read it and recognize it and follow along with it and, and we said there was a punny person who left a comment yes because the people who've left comments have the names seasons greetings oh four mm -hmm. midsummer travels hey now it might have been me <laughs> XO, Robin's XO. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If, if I thought they thought 
we if I thought they listened to the show, I would have been suspicious by yes. those two especially. Yes, which maybe they do. Maybe they do. Blisted 86. Yeah. And Lord of Fries. Lord I love that name. Of fries. <laughs> I love that. But Denise posts, hope you liked your cake as user 049 underscore A. Yes. <laughs> There's no message there. It's just random. But I love Lord of Fries. Lord of Fries is excellent. Oh, and in the middle of all this, we hear that Sarah's friends come to stay. I don't care. We'll talk about her later. So Barnaby is confused by a coffee machine and or a kettle. I think it's a coffee machine that he's trying to turn on. Uh, it, it seems weird. And I don't think he's confused by it. I think he's distracted by Winter coming in. Before he can turn it on, he's talking to Winter, and then Winter makes fun of him. And turns it on for him. Did you notice that the contamination, this is a maniac thing. The contamination sign is both in the the horrible mill kitchen and at the cafe. No, I didn't know that. Now, didn't you tell me that you saw uh, windmills on the desks in the cop shop? Yes, there's two of them. In this episode. Because I was looking for them and I didn't see them. Oh, I saw them. They're definitely there. And uh, Scratchy Chin has a new shirt. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) There's also a pair of people who are at the desk behind, like behind the line of sight for, for John. Yep. Who, there's a man, he comes up to the woman sitting at the desk, he shows her a piece of paper and she is so happy about she whatever's on the paper ecstatic and about. she looks up at him like yeah this is the best document anybody's ever given me yep. wow thank you and in, he's like you got it and then my, he walks away <laughs> in my in my notes two windmills right here <laughs> that's the you know they've got the big recycling push obviously yeah. in in the office so now they're they're experimenting with alternate power sources, and they've got indoor windmills for now, wind energy. Now, maybe. some of these things, <laughs> if you know about how television's made, they may film all of those scenes at for the, the same entire time. series yeah. at the same time. Right. Right. So they redress it, put new extras in. Yeah. Change their extras shirt, and put them back down again. Yep. <laughs> Less chin rubbing this time, Bob. More uh, head scratching instead. Okay. Change it up. So they find out at the mill that somebody makes a comment that the organic flour they're using has been pesticided. It did. You're not organic. Hope and that you, leads hope you them, like your curse. And that leads them to the happiest place on earth, the Larkin Farm. Oh, not no. N- no oh, they're the Larkons. Larktons. 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 That's the mill. Okay, not the Larkins. The happy, no friendly show. No. Why isn't it them? <laughs> That would be different, wouldn't Season it? Season two of the Larkins, by the way, advertised on uh, Acorn yeah. this week. But the farm is the Duncrofts. Yes. Nathan and Jack. Yes. And they have an, uh, a letter from the Department of Agriculture and Farming. Mm-hmm. That's not what it's actually called. Oh, the it, government agency isn't yeah, called that? Yeah, it actually has a funner name. What is it? <laughs> it is the Department of Environment, Food, and Rural Affairs. Mm. That, like, it... If it is environment, murder, and rural affairs, that's kind of midsummer. <laughs> rural affairs? Yes. Affairs that are rural? Yes. Affairs that happen in rural locations. There have been some of those in midsummer. <laughs> yes, there have. And From do- the very beginning, there have been rural affairs. And because it's British government, this is royal. So they do, in fact, have a crest, mm-hmm. but it doesn't look like the crest that's on there. Royal rural affairs? <laughs> royal rural affairs. <laughs> Did you not think rural that- is hard enough yeah. to say? But yeah. royal, r- I can't even say it. Royal, r- r- royal rural affairs. <laughs> because of the weirdness of editing here, Tom leaves the room and he comes in at the farm. It makes it look like he teleports to the farm. Well, he teleported in the live stream. Why can't he teleport now? Yes, but he has a truck outside. <laughs> He does. He just, you know, they just don't show you every second of it, you know, because it'd be boring. And I, okay, speaking of boring, but he doesn't <laughs> knock or anything. He just walks in and goes, "Hey, did you use pesticide?" Like if somebody walked into our house and started yelling us to, like, yeah. "Hey, did you edit that website?" What? What are you talking about? Did you do that podcast? Why are you here? Knock. Go away. Like, ugh. but the the Duncrofts 
have a contract with the mill to provide them with grain. So they need that contract. So the fact that they have used pesticides and they're not organic means that the mill's organic certification could get pulled. And that's a big deal for the business. Yeah. So if there's any chance that they're getting their grain from someplace that isn't organic, they, they can't have that. Yeah, right? this is the rules. And I don't blame Tom for severing that contract at all. No, they put I don't. his business at risk without informing him about it. I'd be done with them. Tom does a lot of sudden things in this episode. Oh, we'll get to the sudden things he does. I hate you. Wait a minute. I should kiss you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Are you blackmailing me? Can we make out? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but this is the right thing to do. Yeah. I don't care that Nathan and Chrissy are childhood friends. This is their livelihood. They've put everything into the mill. They need it to be successful. They cannot risk that. And that kind of like organic certification can make or break a business like that. Oh. So they can't mess around. With, without a doubt. They're, the, the whole first day, right, of the episode is leading up to this Midsummer's Eve party that the mill is throwing for the community to try to make connections and try to, you know, publicize the mill and make friends and, you know, advertise. And so they're they're making all this stuff. Now, nobody shows up, right? Because the folks at the pub have arranged for everybody to kind of um, ban them and not go along with it. But what did you think of their setup for this festival? Much like the crap fair in the last episode, this was a crap cafe at a crap fe- with a crap festival. Why do you say that it was bad? Because, they're, they're, okay, this is essentially what they do. They say, we're going to have a midsummer festival mm-hmm. and invite a bunch of people who are our enemies. Mm-hmm. And if they don't show up, we're going to be upset. Why Mm. would you not stock that with people like from the city or... People who are your allies who you know will come. So that's my big problem with it. Yeah. Other than that, it's a food truck that serves some food. Tables of bread. It seems to be all they've got. They've got a handful of cheeses, though there's one stack of cheese that is not cheese. It is no, not cheese. It is not cheese. We've got a picture of it. we got a picture, and that's going in the show They're notes. They're painted cylinders. Oh, by the way, if you haven't... <laughs> they don't even look like cheese. If you haven't noticed, we're kind of making clever little goofy little reels with the show note pictures now. Yeah. You should watch for those. So if on, you want to see the, ch- the cheese that's not cheese, on you'll YouTube, see it. On YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. It's just, I mean, if you're going to do it, do it. Have a festi- have a party. This is, yep. we have put our own product out on a table and you can have some of it. That is not a party. And no one shows up. Well, no, they don't show up, but that's for, that's not because they didn't put on a good party. Well, they didn't do anything to tempt people to, to, yeah. or, to go again, cross the line, as Denise says, like it's a strike, right? Yeah. So d- what do you know about Midsummer Eve parties and how they're what they're supposed to be like? Well, okay. Other than Midsummer, the movie that's horrific. So, so it's not that. Every once in a while we'll get a person who emails us going, Why are you not covering Midsummer the movie? Because it's an a, disturbing it's horrific. movie. B, it has nothing to do with Midsummer Murder. No. Yes, there are Midsummers. Yes, it's called Murder. It's, yes, it's called Midsummer. It's M A R. Yeah, but not it's, M-E-R. it's nothing like that. But that movie is all about a festival. <laughs> it is. It is. That happens in Midsummer, where a whole bunch of people die. No, right? it happens at Midsummer. At some, at some Midsummer. Not it's totally unrelated. Yes. Not surprisingly, though, the middle of summer. Yes. Where you have the longest day of the year, and the very next day, the days start to get shorter. Mm-hmm is a reason for celebration. It it is the transition from the planting time to the harvesting time. Yes. Right? Yep. It is the beginning of the slow decline to the end of the year in the cold and the dark. Yeah. Right? So all around the world, even in the Southern Hemisphere, though they do it at a different time, people do this. I I believe the festival in... uh, Wicker Man is a midsummer fest. Probably. Yeah. So I looked at what this party should look like mm-hmm. versus what it does look like. Yes. Like if they wanted to actually throw a party that people would want to come to to celebrate the middle of summer, not only should they have provided free food and stuff to butter them up, but they should have had some midsummer related traditions. So the the sign for this event has like a cross like thing. It's a maypole. It's a maypole. Yeah. 
with with two um, flower wreaths on it. Yeah. Yeah. Which is traditional. Yep. Maypoles are traditional. So I looked at festivals around the world. What they all have in common is lots of bonfires. Yeah. There's no fires. There's no Morris dancers and there's no maple. No. There's no wicker mint. Sorry. <laughs> The other day I was reading a thread on Reddit that was a, it was a, a question, it was asked Reddit and it was, what thing did you learn embarrassingly late in life that you probably should have known before? Mm-hmm. I had one of those moments doing research for this when I suddenly realized, though I should have known it a long time before, but I didn't notice, bonfire means good fire Yeah. versus bad fire. Yes. <laughs> I never thought about it. Like, let's purposefully have a fire. That's a bonfire. Yeah. Versus what's what's bad in French? Mal. Mal. Malfire? Yes. Is that what you would call it? Yes. No. Nobody says malfire, but we do say bonfire. So bonfires are- be a good villain name, though. Malfire. 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 So bonfires are a part, and in a large part, it is you have a bonfire to ward away bad fires. Yeah, it's a celebration of we control fires. Yeah, it's if we have a bonfire, maybe our house won't burn down later. Yes. Right, because we got all the fire out of our system. Yeah, I don't know. I guess. Jumping over bonfires is part, yep. a common part of the celebration all around the world, yep. especially for kids to jump over bonfires, yes. which, no, I'm sorry, not letting anybody do that. Because another common tradition is competitive bonfire building between villages, especially in the UK, to see who can build the bigger bonfire. But those two traditions don't go together. No. Let's have kids jump over bonfires, but let's also compete to see who can make the biggest one. No. I may have jumped over a few bonfires. I don't want to hear about it. I don't. Ha. (laughs) I know our kids have done it at camp. I know they have. And every time they mentioned it. When they were kid, when they were in like middle school and high school, they said that they would do this. Every time they mentioned it, I think of the moment of the kid's feet landing on the far side and that loss of balance that makes them fall backwards. Yep. It is an incredibly dangerous I thing that can't children do. Think about it. Yeah. But my favorite of all traditions I found associated with Midsummer's Eve celebrations around the world is one from Finland. Okay. And I read to you a quote. Okay. In the old days, in- meaning they don't do this anymore, I don't think. Okay. Oh. If they do, let us know. Write us. Tell us. Send us some pictures. If no, you haven't heard the tradition yet. We don't want pic. Maybe, maybe you do. I. We don't. In the old days, maidens would use special charms and bend over a well naked in order to see their future husband's reflection in the water. Oh. This, Isn't that convenient? Yes, this seems to me like a tradition that maybe some men came up with. <laughs> this is clearly a man created. Let's get all the young pretty ladies to get naked and put their butts in the air over a well so they can see their future husband in the water. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, all those future husband things are all created by men. <laughs> well, there's another one in, also in Scandinavia, but it seems to be wider spread, where maidens would collect seven different kinds of herbs and put them under their pillow that night and they were dr- to dream of their future husband. Yeah. And and there's, I mean, there's a long tradition of games and stuff for, you know, tween girls and teenage girls to find out who their husband's going to be and that yep. kind of stuff. I'm not, I'm not surprised by that, but you have to be naked and bend over the edge of the well. It, it helps with the pre- precognition. This is why I'm saying we don't need pictures no, of this. No, we don't. This is just a bunch of butt cheeks <laughs> and a well. <laughs> it could veer on bad naked, <laughs> too, if they're bending over too far. That's true. Don't want that. Yeah. Anyway, maybe if there was a well in Lower Blissingham, they could have spiced up this party a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> a little bit more just, than what they had. Just a little. Yeah, yeah. So nobody comes. So Tom gets upset and he's like, shut it down. Throw all the food away. So what does Ricky do? Ricky takes all the food and sells it to the pub. Okay. So why does he do that? Like he likes money. No, no it was going to go no, in the no, trash. No, no, Ricky, I understand. Completely. Oh, okay. Tom cuts it off early. He gets upset. His, his pride is hurt. His pride is hurt. I guess. Oh, yeah. It's just his pride's hurt. He's a weird character because when he talks to her about being poisoned, and we'll get to the poisoning, and 
afterwards, he's kind of nice to her. And he is helping the thief guy because he had a tough childhood too. See, so like there's things to like about him, but then he's just anger man. And everything he does is for himself. Yeah, he is extremely selfish. If he looks after Ricky to give him a hand up, it's because he wants to be able to say, I looked after I him. gave him yeah. a hand up. Yeah. This guy had never baked before ever. Yeah. And I brought him into my kitchen and now he's great yeah. at it. And you look, know. I gave him a headband. And I think part of the reason why he's so upset about the party is that his ego is bruised because he's a celebrity baker. Did you happen to look at his book? Only he is on the cover. Okay. First, it's not him and Chrissy. First it's of him. all, the picture of him on the book, did you see it? Yeah. So he has his hands in front of his face mm -hmm. like he's praying. Mm -hmm. First of all, any person who's selling that book is like, no, your hands don't go in front of your don't face. Don't hide your face. Then he looks like he's about to karate chop the bun. Yes. Like he's so <laughs> angry. He's extremely, his big bushy eyebrows. He's like. He's hardcore bread guy. <laughs> Why did they think that was the right cover for the book? I don't know. So Ricky, Ricky, I can't think of Ricky and say, Ricky, don't lose that number. And I know, oh. I know you, you. Hate Steely Dan so much. Steely Dan, the worst band. But I associate Ricky with, with that song. Anyway, uh, oh, Ricky, you're so fine in okay. your headband. You're so fine. Hey, Ricky, sell hey, me a sandwich. Um, so he takes the sandwiches to the pub, not knowing that the seeds that are on the multi-seed rolls have ergot in them, right? Yeah. So then the fun really starts because well, everybody starts seeing stuff. And she gets the seed, seeds of the seed dungeon. She, Claire. Claire, yeah. because yeah, Claire is out of the multi-seed mix in the kitchen. And so she doesn't go to the cupboard. She doesn't go to the closet of the kitchen where they keep supplies. She goes out to the barn to the seed dungeon. I don't, what is that room? And uh, it's not done visually very well, but she goes out the first time and it's empty. Right. And then she comes back later and it's full. And she thinks Gabriel has filled it. Has filled it. But no. Gabriel is doing an incredibly important job. Yes, at this that's point. right. He's outside with his clipboard. He's outside with his clipboard <laughs> looking at the mill going, yes, there is a artisanal screw here. It is still there. Check. Check. <laughs> Water. Check. Drone shot. Check. Check. <laughs> I don't know what he's out there inspecting and why he's doing it then. <laughs> but it means that he's not where she's looking for him. So she goes back and it's miraculously filled. So. <laughs> and then she runs Claire, off. Claire, Claire, Claire. <laughs> Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Yeah. What did you think? Oh, well, somebody filled it. So I'm just going to give it away. <laughs> she takes it's it to the kitchen. It's full of these black seeds, but oh, well. <laughs> well, it would have black seeds in it. I guess. I'm guessing it's kind of like everything bagel topping. It's got poppy seeds and rye seeds and all kinds of stuff in it. And so, you know. So the dodgy rolls. But did are, you did you look at the pictures of what ergot looks like? It's like big black grains. They look like mouse poop. Uh, they're mouse poop? That's what they look like. Well, and if that's know. mixed in with seeds, are you really going to notice it? Uh, probably not. Probably not. I don't think you would. <laughs> Gabriel says he would. Yeah. I would do it. Because I hand sift them you, and, and look you, for it. You have other problems, dude. Yeah. Go manage your doll alter. So the dodgy rolls are in play now. <laughs> yes. And everybody. Chrissy eats well, a dodgy roll. Okay, wait a minute, though. We got to back up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> because, first of all, Barnaby is like, why do we even have to care about this mill thing? Yes. Like, we're not getting in the middle of this mill thing. Who knows? Yes. They, they got a cake, whatever. whatever. He says, what are they, booby trap baguettes now? Because <laughs> there was a cursed cake, and now there's booby trap baguettes. Like, what else are you doing? Like, yeah. it, there's only one serious case he at a time. He was supposed to be on. He was supposed to be on holiday, and he's doing extra work. He should be happy that it's interesting at least, and he might get a dodgy roll out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't he have a dodgy roll? At least he doesn't have to be at home with Vanessa. See, if he had a dodgy roll, there could have been a great scene where Vanessa had horns. <laughs> Yes, why didn't Barnaby get ergot poisoning? That would have been so great. 
<laughs> oh, they missed a trick there, they didn't they? They missed it, yep. Oh, my gosh. It, w- it would have been his bunny cake moment. There would have been hazardous hot cross buns <laughs> to deal with or, I don't know, traitorous turnovers <laughs> instead of just booby-trapped baguettes. Oh, my gosh. I'm so, I, I, I'm so excited about the idea of... <laughs> Barnaby being poisoned by Ergot. This this whole Ergot scene in reality would be very different, okay. obviously, yeah. because. Now well, you say we've talked about Ergot before, but I looked in my notes and you couldn't find and it. I could not I find a reference. I feel like it's come. To I don't Ergot. know. It it comes up anytime you talk about witches or because witches or grain because people think that the whole witchcraft burning and scare was caused by Ergot. That's it. it it wasn't, it no. didn't, it's not. Certainly not from the symptoms we looked up. No. Um, so the yeah. symptoms we have here <laughs> displayed by the, the, there's two types of symptoms displayed here. One, Chrissy has illusions. I mean, hallucinations. <laughs> I mean, illusions. Is it allusions, illusions, or seen, or hallucinations? They are hallucinations. I know they use the wrong word every once in a while. They're hallucinations. So she has hallucinations, both auditory and visual. And she goes into a weird fugue state. Yes. Where she walks around the mill. <laughs> Following a faceless man in a bad wig. Following a faceless man. Would you go anywhere near a faceless man saying your name? Mark, follow me. Come this way. No, be like, dude. No. No, you he, have no face. He should have the emo wig. <laughs> he does. Oh, he does? Yes, he, he does. He absolutely does. Oh, my God. But no face. But no face. So that's one thing. In the But in the... The in the pub, pub, it's two things. One, people kind of keel over like they have stomach pains or cramps. Yeah, which is actually the closest to somewhat possible yes. symptoms. Early symptoms, of, at least, of, of, of non fatal poisoning. Of non fatal, but or they're screaming and saying, No, 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 because their husband is turned into the devil. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so the landlady hallucinates that her husband has turned into the devil. Yes, he is gray-skinned, and orange, a, and I, flaming eyes. We have a screenshot of it. it. He reminds me of, and this is a reference you will not get, okay, but he is like an older, retired version of Lorne from uh, Angel. No, I don't get that. But all the people who watched Angel are okay, like, they're oh, laughing. yeah, yeah, they're he kind of oh, does look like That's Lauren. a clever reference, yeah. Mark. Oh, to that show I never watched, yeah. except the first season because you made me. Anyway. That's Buffy, not Angel. I didn't make you watch Angel. Oh, that's, yeah. <laughs> okay. They're the same show. <laughs> no. It's a spinoff. It's a spinoff. Yeah. So the way Urgot works yes. is it creates an alkaloid, and the alkaloid interacts with your neural transmitters. Instantly? Uh, pretty fast. Pretty fast. Pretty fast. But by and large, what it does is it causes your smooth muscles to contract. Okay. Okay. So smooth muscles include the muscles in my guts. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, so pretty. You're probably the evacuating very, both ends at the that point. The very first symptoms are, yeah, gastrointestinal. Yeah. Which would make this scene in the pub a bit different. Why does no one come to our pub? <laughs> uh, because you made everybody throw up. And explode blowed. from both ends. But I'm a devil. <laughs> <laughs> You're the diarrhea devil, okay? <laughs> He'd be like, I'm so evil, you're going to poop your pants. <laughs> it was so scary, I pooped myself. No, no, that's because of the ergot. That's the ergot part. <laughs> it's so scary, I walked around in a fugue state. No, no, no. that was the wig. <laughs> the, the double vision and hallucinations are a more extreme case. Yes. They usually happen later. So unfortunately, in reality... <laughs> If you have a truly serious case of ergot poisoning, you are most likely to have those hallucinations while pooping yourself to oh, death. Oh, my gosh. Which is a bad combination. Hallucinating on the toilet yes, is a bad thing. <laughs> that's a bad thing. We've all had the flu. Yeah. But by the 1750s, we understood ergot enough and its effect on smooth muscles that very low doses of refined ergot were actually being used to induce labor. Oh, okay. 
That's cool. Not always successfully with good outcomes, but they did. (laughs) And by the 1860s, we were using it to help treat migraines because it it's also a, a vascular constrictor. Yeah. So it can help reduce migraines. But more than all of the witchcraft stories you've heard about ergot, the truly terrifying case of ergot poisoning happened in the 1950s. Oh, okay. Much later than you would expect. Have you ever heard of Pont Saint Esprit? No. Okay. Never. It's a little town in France. Okay. And in the 1950s, in 1951 to be exact, they had a day that they now refer to as the apocalypse. Oh, wow. The mass poisoning in Pont Saint Esprit. Okay. It was shortly after the war ended, right? We're still, food is still an issue in Europe. Yep. There were government programs in France about where grain could go and who got it and when they got it. And there's a big mix up about grains and flowers and black market and good grain and adulterated grain and all this stuff, right? In this little town of Pont Saint Esprit, 250 people were poisoned with ergot in one day. Ooh. Seven of them died. Ugh. 50 of them had such severe poisoning that they went insane and were sent to asylums. Wow. But the worst, besides the people who just died, I mean, these are bad, but yeah. the most notable, let me say the notable, not the worst, the notable... A man who believed himself to be an airplane died by jumping from a second-story window. Oh. And an 11-year-old boy had to be pulled off his mother, who he was trying to strangle. Wow. Because he was hallucinating so bad. They just eat bad bread. Because of bad bread. They were able to track all of this back to the same bakery where they all got their baguette for the day, and this flour had been used, and it had ergot in it. And And this is... Proves witchcraft how? It was it was a bad scene. It's a bad scene. They would have much preferred it to be witches, I bet. Yeah. Yeah, that is probably the best known proven case of mass ergot poisoning. Oh. Really, the, the subtitle of this episode is Don't Buy Old Party Food. Well, you don't want to be associated with anything that has the terms cutaneous eruptions. Yeah. Oh. Or dry gangrene. Dry gangrene. Oh. Associated with no. it. And that's, mm. ooh, that's ergot. So these folks are lucky just to have some, my husband's devil visions and then get over it. Because yeah. it could have been much messier. Yeah. <laughs> they seem to get over it pretty quickly. They did get over it really quickly. Vanessa wants to go to a zero-waste pop-up restaurant in Badger's Drift. Yes. What would that be? Um, it would be the guy from the Mushroom episode, naked, serving, destroying angels. <laughs> <laughs> on, With an apron over his destroying angels. <laughs> on a plaid blanket in the woods. Yes. And... Maybe there would be an occasional falling vicar for entertainment or something, or and, what? Uh, let's see. Uh, there could Vanessa be- doesn't know about Badger's Drift. No, she doesn't. John does. Yeah. John- Those weren't his cases, but he knows all about it. I'm sure it is the talk. Like, I'm sure it's talked about in hushed voices in the police station. Like, Badger's Drift. Yeah, like, send the new guy. There's a case in Badger's <laughs> Drift. You might want to wear a helmet and uh some neck protection. Watch for fallen vicars. Yeah. <laughs> Don't eat any sailboat sandwiches. Bye. <laughs> you know? Iced sombreros. <laughs> no iced sombreros. <laughs> Every time there's a mention of Badger's Drift, and we've seen this online, we absolutely agree. You should drink. Yeah. Because they do it just for fun. Yeah. I think it's an inside joke among Midsummer viewers now with the writers. That- yeah. If they're going to mention another village, it's a 50-50 it's, chance it's, it's going to be Badger's Drift. Likely Badger's Drift. Even Drift. though there's dozens of villages By the way, mention. you can buy our Badger's Drift t-shirts yes. on our merch shop. <laughs> yes, designed by a listener. They're awesome. While they're all hallucinating, somebody steals the petty cash from the pub. I don't think... Okay. While this is happening, Barnaby and Winter are outside, and we see Ricky sneaking around behind the pub... Supposedly delivering sandwiches or taking sandwiches yeah. away. At first, we thought it was a mistake. But, yeah, I did. But, I really thought it was a mistake that there was an actor who was in the wrong place and they didn't Ricky cut it. But it's around. Ricky. 
I don't think he stole the petty cash. I think Silas paid him for the sandwiches. No, Silas admits that later. From the petty cash. Yeah, okay, yeah. he does. He yeah, pays him from yeah. it. So it's not stolen after all. And so they got to go back. Tom and Winter have to go back to the, the mill, to the village, because more has happened. And again, Barnaby's got to be witty. Yeah. What are they, fisticuffs over the focaccia? Yep. <laughs> he's he's totally like I'm the witty old guy here. Yeah, I don't want to do any work. I don't want to have to go there. Well, don't worry. Nobody's you, died. You perform an act of great negligence in the next few moments <laughs> in the episode. Nobody's died yet. <laughs> no one has died yet. They're waiting for you to be fifty feet away. So Barnaby and, and uh, Winter, Winter, Barnaby and Winter go to the farm because this person may be the poisoner. Right. The Duncroft farm has been providing grain to the bakery, yep. which made the bread, which was served at the pub. So they're like, oh, didn't they just sever their contract with them over their organic status? They have a motive to poison the, the flour. Yeah. To get back at them. So let's go and talk let's to them. Let's go talk. I think that's a completely logical thing to do. No, there's an illogical thing that soon happens. They but. find Jack, the yep. dad, in the farm. They talk to him. He's like, no, my son's a good guy. He wouldn't do that. Meanwhile, while they're talking to Jack in the house, Nathan is being murdered in the silo. Well, okay. So Nathan has a couple of problems. First of all, so there's grain at the bottom of the silo. Mm -hmm. Why he has to clean it up, I'm not really sure. It's last year's. Maybe. It's old. Get rid of it. Maybe. Get it out of there. But the way he's doing it is dumb. So there is about a layer of one grain deep of grain on the floor. At least. Of the silo. The silo's what? 10 feet in diameter? 15 feet in diameter? We'll get to math later. And he's... Sucking it up with a shop vac. It's a big shop vac, high capacity, but it can, it has a canister that can, you can maybe fill it a third of the way before it's going to be overworking and you have to empty it out. Yeah. And it seems to not be working because he's got he, the tiniest nozzle. He's like, why is this not working? He looks down the tube. I was expecting <laughs> the killer to come in and stick it on his face. <laughs> Nobody can see you don't, doing that visual, by the don't, way. <laughs> don't kill me with the vacuum. A broom you would have my nose off and I died. A broom would have solved his problem. He could have he could have swept it, then vacuumed it. Yeah. Right? But no. He's gonna put on his big headphones. It's gotta be loud. Yeah. A shop vac is loud enough. Yeah. Put it in an echoey big empty silo. Well, that's silo. why he uses big headphones, so he can't hear the door closing either. But, like, could he have picked a less efficient way to clean it out? No, he couldn't have. Anyway, a whole bunch of grain falls on him and kills him. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, he could have swept it and then vacuumed it. And we've reached the part in the program where Mark says, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> no, it doesn't work that way. That's not how silos work. <sighs> but we're going to, we're just going to move past it. Accept it. People die in silos. That's not what I'm oh saying. Oh my gosh, Her they do. Don't horrific. even Google it. It's horrifically sad. Horrifically Guys, sad. Guys, if you you or anyone you know works near a silo, you know. Yep. Be careful. I grew up on a it's farm. We had silos. Really sad yep. stories. But this is not how you clean a silo. And it also doesn't fill up like... Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Nathan is in there. The door... And he's Jimmy screaming shut. and hitting the door. But that's over the sound of the grain falling. Grain falling is not going to be that and loud. And the silo is in view of the house, but it's not like next to Meanwhile, it. It's not Barnaby's attached to it. Barnaby's in the house being pithy with his mm -hmm. jokes and everything. <laughs> yeah. So we said in the mini that it was improbable that they found him. But in the episode... And we didn't go back and look at this to double check. The dad says, oh, he's out in the farmyard or he's in the silo or something. Mm -hmm. We think they may have added that because <laughs> of me. <laughs> okay, here's why we think it, okay? Because I swear the first time we watched it, I was wondering why they would go look for him in the silo. Because the grain would be up past the, the window. Past the they window. They wouldn't even know he was in there. No. Even if even, Nathan does tell his dad, I'm going to go clean the silo and then fill it. Yeah. So if his dad went out there, he would go, well, he already finished that job. Where did he go next? Yeah. Right? 
So I thought they saw the screwdriver in the door. Yeah. But no, the killer takes the screwdriver. Yes. So they wouldn't, because that would have like cued them and do that's weird is there usually a screwdriver holding that door shut so that might have gotten their attention but no the killer takes the screwdriver but now when we rewatch it there's a lot the dad says though you don't see him say it says nathan is out working in the silo or something like that something like that to give them a reason to go, look, I still think they would have gone out and went, well, it's full of grain. Oh, so she, he goes, ask him yourself. Ask him yourself. Yeah. Oh, that poor man. That's such a horrible way to die. Well, especially when they open up that door and a cup of grain falls out. No. When it should be a barrel full of grain falls. <laughs> At least, if not, the whole silo empties very quickly out into the farm. No, yard. no, no. It On the ground. I, I looked. Double looked. But wouldn't it? Oh, Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't it come pouring out? Yeah, yes. But like a wave of grain but, with Nathan's body in it? But there was like a cup. <laughs> well, maybe the shop vac blocked it. Because <laughs> it's still in there too. Plugged in where? Yeah. <laughs> that's a good uh, that, Yeah. They usually have electricity. Maybe they? that's how they figured it out. Because yeah. they saw the shop vac extension cord Maybe. still running under the door and went Maybe. that's weird mm. why would he have left the shop vac in the silo when well, he filled it up Fleur is always right so she probably showed up and goes he's in the silo yeah probably <laughs> yeah but then jack admits that they were selling ergot yes for alternative medicine yeah they completely skip over that super fast and i'm like you know that's not a thing yes it is it is a thing oh, it is? yeah it is a thing i just told you it's a thing but and i can completely see that there are people in midsummer who would be buying it because yeah. there's a lot of alternative people in midsummer I guess. Um, so, so they had the ergot, they were selling the ergot, the ergot was present at the farm. I, I get it. Um, then Gabriel has a break in Yes. and everybody wants to blame, oh, Ricky, you're so fine for everything. He stole my keys. He broke into my house and he took my box. I'm the killer. He took my box with my stuff in it. Did you notice on the murder board after this, that the pictures of the people who work at the mill were sepia toned? Like- no. Like mill, like flour, <laughs> like old timey, yeah, like they're they're color coded along with the mill, like Chrissy and Tom are, but everybody else is regular color. No, I didn't notice that. Yeah, it's... the bottom line is that Barnaby and Winter were there when Tom was killed, and 50 I don't, feet away, I don't think they've ever been that close, that close while someone was actually being killed, they've been that close to. A murder being attempted. And they stopped and it. And running and stopped it, but not... Not a successful murder. While we were and sitting here not having the tea. the first murder. Yeah. Murder. 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 <laughs> it's kind of pretty far into the episode for somebody to finally die. Suddenly a red herring drives up in a red car. Uh, <sighs> can we just ignore Sophie slash Laura, blackmailer, jerk face? She drives up. <laughs> I remember we were watching the episode the first time. She drove up and Sarah said, journalist... Obviously. And, and I said, ex girlfriend, and we were, we're both, both right. right. I think Sophie and Vanessa can leave together. Yeah. Because I dislike them both so much. By the way, I'm a yob with my white hat. <laughs> Ricky? His interrogation is he's a good actor because he's smarm intensified. He and what's his face from the first episode this season, who is the poacher? Yes. Who's like, yeah, she's into me. Can you blame her? They can be buddies together yeah. and just offend every woman they run into. I don't. Uh, well, I, okay. Why? I, why uh, is Sophie slash Laura there? Well, she's there to open the door in broad daylight, half naked, and start talking to him at his place of residence and business. Mm-hmm. Would somebody not notice? Then he kisses her in the open doorway. Well, no. First, he says, "What are you doing here? I'm through with you." And she goes. Well, I'm here now. And he's like, oh, well, I might as well kiss you then. It's all over. Oh, wait, I have to kiss you. Mm-hmm. Like, never mind. She's already been calling him. And he's, he says to her, don't call me again. And hangs up on her. So she just shows up. There, 
I know we can't criticize Midsummer for this, but there is no heat between them. Ugh, no. At all. There's no, like... Because she thinks she can blackmail him into liking her. That doesn't, that does not work. That will never work. Yeah. No. It's just horrific. Okay, let's Did get over Did you know I also do master classes? In organic what? sourdough for beginners. That's all he talks about is sourdough. That's all he knows. Yeah. Is sourdough. Barnaby says to Denise, online trolling is a crime. Mm-hmm. It's a criminal offense. And it actually is in England. That's good. Yeah. Because like, it's not enough of a crime here. The statute in England says the following. The trolling is a form of baiting online, which involves sending abusive and hurtful comments across all social media platforms and can be persecuted under the Malicious Communications Act, which should be the name of an industrial band. Malicious Communications? <laughs> Act. Act. Of 1988 or the Communications Act of 2003. They also have definitions of online threats, disclosure of private uh, sexual images without consent, or revenge porn, mm-hmm. online harassment, grooming, stalking online, and virtual mobbing. Why does the U.S. not have this in their books? They definitely should. Why, yes, I'm also a baker. <laughs> Here are my awards. Tussle over the tortillas. Uh, Denise, I'm just, I'm sorry. I just, I can't get over the fisticuffs over the focaccia. (laughs) Yeah. So she, she runs the pub. She is on the care, the parish council. Um, She organizes the strike of the mill. She rides her horse and she's an award-winning baker. At the 53rd annual Midsummer Show, she won first prize for Best Cake at that show. The Laura Blessington Christmas Fair and the Summer Show of 76th, 77th, and 78th annual. Well, she must be good because she can make a self-slicing cake with pig blood in it. It's, it's, it is very impressive. It's an impressive cake. And this is where we find out how the woman who runs the mill's mother died. She drowned, right? She fell, she was crushed in the wheel of the mill. Yeah, and now you can say, why does Chrissy come back to the mill? Let's, Let's review Chrissy's history with the mill. Just so far. Yes, Chrissy, as a teenager, is has an attempted rape that Mm -hmm. happens at the mill. That causes her to have amnesia from the trauma. And the accidental death drowning because of this event. Mm -hmm. Okay, one. Mm-hmm. Two, her mother mm-hmm. is crushed by the wheel. Yeah. Three, her father, not being able to sell organic oats in the 70s, <laughs> shuts down the mill, abandons it, and becomes a hermit. Yes, an alcoholic hermit. Why does she want anything to do with this place? Tom. <sighs> See, here's I th- here's the backstory for them, I imagine. Yeah. Tom is an aspiring quasi-celebrity baker. Okay. He wants a leg up. He needs his next move. Yep. He hears there's a woman named Chrissy who's broken and sad. And has a mill. But happens to own a mill. Do you, do you put that on like your Tinder profile? Yep. Owns cursed mill. Yep. Swipe, swipe, swipe. Wait. Owns a mill. A cursed mill. Hmm. She looks fragile. Yes. I can woo her. <laughs> well, okay. What is Chrissy's Tinder profile? <laughs> Orphan. Yeah. With memory problems. <laughs> Trauma-induced amnesia orphan seeks manipulative, cheating, quasi-celebrity YouTube baker. To help run mill. Yeah. That's cursed. That will make everybody hate me. Must have previous girlfriend. <laughs> Who's a stalker blackmailer journalist. Yes. Check. Check. He's swiping right on that. Oh, yeah, baby. And never mind that the whole village calls it the Mill of Abaddon, which is like hell mill. Yeah, that that whole thing is just stuck The on. Abaddon thing, I don't get. I don't know no. who came up with it, who started it, why. Mm. Oh, by the way, just as a little pleasant side note, the term that they use for people who suffocate in a grain silo. Yes. It's grain entrapment or grain engulfment. Yeah, I'm not searching that on the Googles. They're unpleasant terms. Anyhow. Meanwhile, at the Sarah master wins, class, Sarah, Sarah wins, wins Star, Star Baker. Baker. <laughs> they don't say Star Baker, but they come really yes, close. Yes, they do. They, they say star student star student and they give her a star yes. that says baker it on says it says baker on it and vanessa's like i didn't win i'm going to leave yeah 
Vanessa could be nice. She buys them stuff. She takes them out. She helps them in need. She encourages them to try new, try things, new things and stuff. If but she then she's got this that, side that yeah. I hate. Oh. She's like, I'm going to stay and talk to Tom and see if he'll go to the restaurant with me. She knows he's married. Never mind. Never mind. It doesn't take five minutes to bake sound. <laughs> <laughs> and I think Sarah's looks burnt on top. It, uh, Sarah's bake is just a little burnt. <laughs> yes. It's in my notes. Yes. The crumb looks very good. As somebody who can't make bread because there's something wrong with our house yes. that prevents anything from rising, no matter what it is, unless it's a cake, it won't rise. I think her crumb looks amazing. I would definitely eat not the top of that bread where it's black, but the rest of it, yeah, I need it. Now, we have a friend, uh, former, uh, the wife of a former uh, work colleague I have, who is a horse person. Mm -hmm. she, Wait a minute. She's not a centaur. She likes horses. She likes horses. <laughs> she used to have a when horse. When you say horse person, <laughs> now we're I just centaurs. think horse slash person. <laughs> she used to have a horse that she took care of. Mm -hmm. It requires a barn, mm -hmm. several pieces of clothing and tack. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of money mm -hmm. and an exorbitant amount of time. They, 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 she, in fact, stopped this hobby because it took up so much time. And the the horse lived on a farm with other horses. Yes. Where there were also other people who assisted in taking care of it. It was so a when, whole enterprise. So when she wasn't there, she was paying for that service yes. for other people. She didn't just throw a saddle in the back of her car and be a horse person. Yes, like Denise does. What is Do we up? even see her with a horse? No, we see her with a there saddle. Are no horses in this episode. She's in a field with her car with a saddle. She sees Bobby running into the woods, and that's the end of the horse personness. <laughs> that's all. Really, we should see Denise galloping through the woods on her horse, yes. pursuing Bobby. Where are you going, Bobby? With Maria on the back of the horse. Go faster, Denise. Let's get him. Let's catch him. My other son was better than you. Where are you going? Then we have another completely passionless and heatless scene in the weird alley with Vanessa and Winter. She's trying to be cute. She is. And obviously. <laughs> and she's sophisticated and experienced it enough to know what I'll call you means. She lets it go. Yep. She lets it go. But it is another scene that is just uncomfortable. It's, that's what it's for. It's just to make Winter squirm. And because that's fun for us to watch him squirm. I guess. Poor Nathan. Nathan's dead. Oh, sorry. Poor Bobby. Poor Bobby. Because where Bobby's going in the woods... The shepherd hut of love. It's the love shack. The love shack, baby. <laughs> where he and Nathan would have their their dates, their meetups, because they had to keep it private because Nathan's dad was never going to understand. What I really like about this subplot is that there is no point in which there is a scene where either Nathan or Bobby... of show trivialized or stereotypical. stereotypical gay thing. Yeah. They are two men who like men mm -hmm. who love each other. Yeah. That is it. Yep. Who had to keep it secret because they knew they don't have to perform that they wouldn't be accepted. Homo, uh, homosexual normative things or anything like that. No, no. I like that. I do too. Uh, I feel so bad for Bobby. Bobby has... His mom idolizes his dead brother, who was actually quite the jerk. Yes. His... He has the worst job in the world because he's second fiddle at the worst cafe in the world. Which has no business whatsoever. None. No. Has to deal with his mom, who's fretting all the time. And I'm sure they have money troubles. And now the man he loved is dead for no reason. He has been murdered. He did nothing wrong. And he did the thing that caused his... Yeah. Because he did the ergot poisoning. Bobby's actually the one who put yeah. the ergot in the seeds. So yeah. Nathan died because of what he did. Yep. Now, it's not his fault. It's Gabriel's fault. It's the killer's fault. Yes. But poor Bobby. Do you think Bobby's going to jail? No. I don't think so. I think they're just going to let him move to the city. I think city. Bobby's going to Sadville. Yeah. Ugh, he's going to get away from his mom. Cornflower Cottage. Ricky is a blackmailer. Yes. He's He tries to blackmail Tom. Then he tries to blackmail Gabriel, and that gets him killed with a big old sack of flour. Yeah, Gabriel does the thing. Okay. 
there's two solutions. There's one solution in the real world for blackmailers, and there's two solutions in the story world for blackmailers. Mm-hmm. The real solution in the in if you're blackmailed in real life, just tell the person who you're keeping the secret from, and the yep. blackmailer has no power. You're done, and that's the same in the story. But also in the story, you could kill them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in, blackmail is never a good game. No, it's never a good because game. inevitably. Killing your blackmailer sort of draws attention to it and makes people wonder, why did you kill them? Were they blackmailing you? What about? Yes. So it's going to come out anyway. Yeah. But in Gabriel's world, uh, his blackmail, uh, the reason why Ricky can blackmail him is that he's a very bad person and a killer and and has a doll altar. So yes. uh, there's all kinds of reasons. We'll get there. Mm-hmm. This is the second grain killing in the episode because he's killed by a sack of grain. Ah, oh, yeah, that's true. It is... A grain of truth, Mark. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait a minute. That's the title of the episode. Yes. Oh. Bonfire means good fire. Did Claire, you know that? <laughs> Claire finally gets a scene. Oh wait, it's over. No, I got a heart necklace. Ricky gave it to me. He loved me. Wait, he stole it. Oh. <sighs> Let me go put my little hat on again. Like, that's it. Poor Claire. Maybe Claire will go to the big city with Bobby, and they'll be friends, and they'll have a big life. Tom owns the pub now. Why does Tom want to buy the pub? I don't know. Do not know. Maybe because he wants to turn it he into still a- still needs people to run it. A real cafe oh, instead of maybe. his little truck in the in the grass. There's no other stores in this town. Mm. They say that- when Tom was younger, he was prone to compulsive acts of violence. Yeah. But it was all before he was 18. Yeah. What What did he do? <laughs> I don't know. Was he into bread back then? Maybe. Did he beat people with baguettes or something? He stared at them with his karate chop. <laughs> yes. He's like, oh, I'm going to put your face in my starter. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> no one, no one, not a single person in the entire investigation of the Yob's house has gloves on. They touch everything with their hands. Okay, there's a mystery there that I could not figure out. All right. Okay. So they find Gabriel's box in Ricky's vent. Yes. And none of that is a euphemism. That's actually what happens. <laughs> they find his box in Ricky's in Ricky's vent, okay? Oh. There is a uniform policeman who finds it, but doesn't retrieve it, gets Winter's attention so that Winter can retrieve it, right? Without gloves. Winter has his phone to use as a flashlight. Yes. But the uniform policeman has something else. It's a flashlight. Shaped like a scanner gun? Yes, it's like a little handheld flashlight. But it's a weird shape. It is a weird shape. It looks like a scanner gun. I would. I mean, I've seen like trigger flashlights before that have a handle that goes down into your hand and the flashlight Oh, runs. it's a weird one. I'll it, give you it, that. It looks like a price scanner from the grocery store. <laughs> yep. It does look like a price scanner. I've seen flashlights like that. Okay. It's a weird one. And yes, they have no gloves on. Okay. You solved my mystery then. Never mind. Gabriel's box is in Just Ricky's vent. touch a bunch of Evidence. They, they touch everything, including a cornicello pendant. Yes. That Maria wears in the grumpiest villager photo I've ever seen in a newspaper wow. in Midsummer, where only Maria and Denise can be recognized. Everybody else is just no name people. Just grumpy people in a photo. And Winters gets an email about it, but it's not from PC Tom Jones. No. I checked. It's from it's, Anthony McEwen. Maybe Tom is on vacation. Did you notice? Wait uh, a minute. He gets a reprieve. Tom Jones gets to be Tom. He gets oh, to be yeah. the only Tom, Tom Jones is the only Tom. Yeah. Did you we know? Have, we have a Tom. Yes. It's Tom Jones. It's Tom Jones, the PC. Yes. Winter's user number is 288-309-6178. Why do we care? It's there. I looked it up. (laughs) Okay. All right. Okay. Poor Chrissy, in the long line of fictional women who have some kind of trauma in their past and are shown something and it evokes crazy memory retrieval and new trauma, she sees the picture of the necklace and has her convulsive flashback. Yep. Oh, memories. Bad. Yeah. Why am I here? What the hell did I think I was doing moving back into this mill? <laughs> and then Tom gets whacked with the skillet. Okay. And be- I go, be- yay! Before Tom is whacked with the skillet. <laughs> I cheered when In he got the it. moments before Tom <laughs> Take is Tom whacked. Take Tom out. Take Tom out. <laughs> I have in my notes, 
there's been two murders and this woman is playing peekaboo. <laughs> Who's playing peekaboo? The girlfriend. She she sneaks oh, up on Sophie slash Laura yeah. sneaks up on Tom in the kitchen and puts After her hands two over murders. his eyes. <laughs> she clearly is not right, honey. Also, he locks the door and then turns around and sees her. He would clearly have seen her. Not if she was hiding. <laughs> But the She's best, a stalker girlfriend, Mark. She can fit into curiously small spaces. The best part is this is her last scene because she goes, even though I'm using a false name and the cops know it and there's been two murders, I'm going back to London. Yeah, I know I'm wearing short shorts and a business jacket, but I'm out of here. Whammo, goodbye. <laughs> and I'm like, goodbye. Can you take Vanessa with you? Okay. <laughs> this now, is Gabriel's thinking. It's time for math. Okay, this is Gabriel's thinking. <laughs> I know Tom is lying here on the floor, and I have smashed his head with... It a, looks like a cast iron skillet Like to me. a little cast iron skillet. And I could beat him to death here. Yep. Because I'm really angry with him because he's cheating on the woman I love. Yep. And no, publicly no, no. humiliating her. I could beat him to death. I could stab him with the mini knives. I could use any of these handy dandy kitchen implements that are here and in this enclosed space where the door is locked and I could end his life right here, right no, now. No, I must mastermind a obscure, totally weird way of de death. It would only be better if he tied him to train tracks. Yes, it, it's totally <laughs> tying him to train tracks. Absolutely. So he ties a rope around. And I'll tell you why. He doesn't just... Kill him in the kitchen because that's not enough. He needs him to suffer. Okay. He wants him to wake up mid-drowning. Okay. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Okay. Because he's that crazy. So Gabriel's like, no, nope. because now Gabriel couldn't have thought this beforehand. No, because it's, so, it's, a, it's a murder of opportunity. So he goes, wait a minute. There's a giant spinning screw. And I checked on it earlier. I know it's there. I know it's there. Let me look up my uh, clipboard. clipboard. Yep. Yes, yep. it is it's there. It's there. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to stop it and attach a rope. Yes, because you have to stop it first and tie a rope around it. Okay. okay. Then I'm going to break the mechanism. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait a minute. So nobody else can stop no, it. No, wait. I have to stop it. And then I can't break it yet. Okay, no. so I'm going to stop it mm -hmm. and then put the rope on it mm -hmm. and then take the rope all the way around the pond. Yep. 50 feet away. Yep. More on numbers later. Where I've left... Unconscious Tom. In the broad daylight. But nobody's seen him. No. I tie it around his torso. Yep. A couple of times. A couple of times. Loopity, loopity, loop. My, not, my not, super not. knots. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then, then I go back to the mill house. Do, 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 do. And I turn on the mill... Turn on the wheel, the, the corkscrew, and break it so then no one else can it. stop okay. it. Okay. Wow. <laughs> I would have liked to see him tie it around the first time because what does he do? Like hang from his by his feet from the bridge? I guess. And hug it <laughs> to put the, the rope around it? How does he do that? I don't know. Then, the okay, we figured out that... Probably that screw is maybe 12 Let's, inches in diameter. Well, the center and, of it, right? Yeah, the outside yeah. edge, like the, the actual threads on the screw are bigger than that. But, but the, the center, center of it, the axle, the, where the rope would actually ride around. Area of a triangle. and No. It, the, it, it would take about 25 seconds to reel in that rope. The speed that it's going, I estimated that it was turning about every five seconds. So one, two, three, and it would four, take five, in maybe one, two, five feet. And it, so it would be reeling in more like 10 feet. Yeah. Because if we say the center of it is 12 inches, yeah. it's going to pull in about 110 inches every rotation. Yep. And he's. These are all estimates. Let's folks. say he's 50 Don't feet away. Check our math. It starts to reel him in. He should be moving like a water skier. Yes. <laughs> He should be moving like a water skier across the surface of the water now, with a wake. Now, Tom is a bad person. He has a bad book cover. Mm -hmm. He's a horrible husband. He's not the best baker in the world. He's certainly not a very good teacher. No. All of those things. He does a good dead body here. He does. No, he's not dead. No. He does a good unconscious he, body. He does a good unconscious body. And whoever the stunt person is who actually goes into the water and pretends to be pulled along yeah. does a very good yeah. job. It's super good. And it would certainly 
be absolutely terrifying if you became conscious while being pulled through or, water. Or your husband towards or a spouse corkscrew. was do- having that happen. Yes. There is not enough time for winter to get there and save him. No. no. Because they're not even there yet. By the way, wet winter uh, is featured in this week's reminder. Of everybody loves a wet winter. Yeah, everybody loves a wet winter. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly Vanessa does. It's almost as good as how the ladies in Finland find out who their husbands are. <laughs> yeah, I think Tom would be skimming over the water like a water skier with a wake. And then, man, I, I'm just seeing a cartoon version of that rope reeling in, reeling in, and then him just wet slapping around. Because <laughs> he'd, he'd hit the bridge, and then it would drag him loose, and then he would flap around and hit the mill, and then he would go under, and then he would hit the bridge, and then he would hit the mill. And the mill guy would come out and said, I told him not to go in there. Yeah, and check. I got it on my clipboard. Got it on my clipboard. Tom, Tom on the corkscrew. Got it. So there's some silliness with Silas, and then we figure out that Gabriel's the dude. Yes. Wow. Okay, Sarah, I have a murder list. Mm -hmm. Where do I keep my murder list? Um, I don't know. In a book on my night on my coffee table with a picture of my girlfriend. Oh yeah, yeah. But it's a picture of her before she was 18, right? Yeah. Really creepy. That I've written her married name on over and over again on the back as if she was married to me. Yeah, and she has a ribbon in her hair. Where did I see that ribbon before? Oh, on my basement key. Let's go to the murder dungeon. (laughs) I'm glad it has a dartboard. It's his Chrissy Dolly altar. It's Chrissy Dolly altar. Where he also keeps his sports equipment. And his cannon. Did you notice there was a cannon yes. on there? Too? Yes. Why is there a cannon? My favorite bit is that he comes down the stairs and he says, You can't be in my house without a warrant. Yes. And Winter or Barnaby, I don't remember, says, One of them says, Well, the door was open and we were worried, right? So they pretend they've got a reason to go in the house without a warrant. And Gabriel says, Well, no need. You can go now. Like, but wait a minute. We're standing next to your psycho altar. Yes. There is a need to worry. No, no, no. There's nothing to see. You can go. Thanks. Who could be the worst person to walk in on this scene? Chrissy. She's frail. <laughs> She's had trauma, Mark. So let's put her on rickety basement stairs and show her the crazy altar dedicated to her. With her instant dry clothes. Mm-hmm. <sighs> So what we find out. The ergot triggered her memory retrieval. Yes. Because while she was having crazy diarrhea, (laughs) she had a lot of time to think. Maybe that's why she didn't notice her husband was gone all night. It was like. I was just walking around. Okay. I'm officially calling no longer on the I was just walking. Yeah, I had a lot of things. I went to for think a walk about. to clear my head. I went that for is a not walk an to, alibi. That's no longer allowed as a fake alibi. No, no. I can only think that she thought, and I'm sorry for the crude D. Yes, I'm shitting my pants. When was the last time I shit my pants? <laughs> oh, I know. It's when I saw that guy get murdered in front of me. <laughs> what I want deja vu all over again. What I want now, I remember. What I want to know is what. In the mill, changed Gabriel from a tall, thin, lanky gentleman to a thin, portly, uh, to a portly, short gentleman. (laughs) Trauma. Because that guy is not Gabriel. It's the weight of love, Mark. (laughs) Over the years, it's made him shorter, balder, (laughs) squatter. It's just. It's pressing down on him like. Michael's being pressed down yeah. on in the water. Yeah, it's like gravity. So suddenly he becomes the spirit of vengeance. What I want to know is where was he between when Chrissy's family abandoned the mill and when she came back? Did he spend all that time pretending to run the mill? He was shortening. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was sanding his feet. <laughs> Must be shorter when she comes back. (laughs) Like, was he just in the abandoned mill going, look at me, I'm milling grain, I'm a master miller. Now it's time to kill people. One day she'll come back, she'll come back, and I'll have my tan outfit ready. She'll come (sighs) back. Oh, Chrissy, let me look at your picture again. Here's another dolly for my altar. Looks like Chrissy. Wait a minute, there's a can in there. (laughs) (laughs) Kaboom! (laughs) 
I had to protect you and the mill. In actual effect, he doesn't protect anybody and not the mill because the mill would have been damaged by Tom's gigantic noggin. Yeah. Hitting up against the screen. away on bridge mill, bridge mill, bridge mill. <laughs> he... <laughs> <laughs> he's he's upset on Chrissy's behalf because Tom is embarrassing her, right? Yeah. He's trying to buy the pub. He's making everybody in the village hate her. Yeah. Because she looks like a hypocrite, but she doesn't know that stuff. She doesn't know what he's up to. So she's actually genuinely trying to make friends and he's going behind her back doing bad stuff. And that's making her look really bad and making her feel really bad because she wants people to like her and nobody likes her. They used to be her friends. And... That makes Gabriel mad. So he has to kill Nathan because Nathan poisoned the bread and it's, makes the makes the mill look it's bad. Time to start killing people. Yeah. Then he realizes, no, no, it, Ricky's Ricky's bad. He's the fastest, most um, sly, short, portly man I've ever seen. He's stealthy. He's super. He stealthy. can climb a silo like Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> That's, no, that's spider silence. That's what you don't see out the window oh. when <laughs> when Barnaby and Winter are in the kitchen is Gabriel with his suction cups going do, 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 up, the, up the side of the silo, <laughs> opening the thing and going do, 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 back down. This, I've said this about other episodes, but this episode in particular, no one does any work. No. No one does any Well, there's work. some people in the kitchen I who are guess. making focaccia. I guess. They look kind of busy. And the two people from the creativity company who film their live streams and stuff, they're working yeah. in their purple That's sweatsuits, sweatshirts. True. They're hustling. You're they're walking nothing, backwards. You're nothing like my father. Yeah, he's not an alcoholic recluse. Yeah. He's in a homicidal <laughs> maniac. That's nothing like your father. It seems to me like he should have just taken Tom out right away. Yeah. Like before any of this it happened. It would have been easy to see Tom as sleazy. Just take Tom out, right? Because he would have known this guy's yeah. not good for her because yeah. nobody can be. No. Right? Take him out. None of this happens. Gabriel has a bad murder plan. Yeah. He should have taken Tom out and then taken Chrissy down to his basement and said, look, I love you. I've had this altar for you for 20 years. Be mine. And she would have been, oh, Gabriel. Let's play darts. I know you're as old as my dad. <laughs> and you're but, short and portly. <laughs> but will you be my boyfriend? Let's make bread together. And it all would have been happy. Uh, they could have buried Tom in the basement. Claire has more reason to kill than <laughs> Yes. Oh. Uh. Uh. But Vanessa leaves, and now we know where Betty is. Yes. She's at Sarah's mom's. Yep, and Barnaby has a cold beer. He gets a night at home the to be a slob yep. without worrying about his pesky child. How do they even know she's there or not? Yeah. Or his wife's friend, who's now going to be gone. Oh, darn. Best corp. <laughs> nice corpse. Speaking um, of corpses. Best corpse, I got, uh, uh, we've got Nathan and we've got Ricky. Okay. I got to go Nathan because his manner of death is so bad. We the don't hand. really get to see the corpses. The yeah. It's just so, it's just so unpleasant. Yep. Um, and people actually die that way and that's yep. really horrible. Yep. After the credits. Yes. Everyone in this entire episode leaves. If they don't go to jail, they should move away. Yes. Claire should move away. Yep. Uh, Bobby should move Bobby away. Bobby should move away. Vanessa Denise and Silas should, move should away. sell the pub and get out of there. They should go away. Yeah. Tom and Chrissy. Tom and Chrissy's marriage is kaput. Yeah. They're done. So she should she should sell it. Move away. She should sell it to like um an art collective or something. Something. You know. Or there's a guy They want to turn it into a gallery or a co-op or something. Yeah. There's a guy who likes shepherd's pie. <laughs> yeah. Well, he likes burying shepherd's pie. <laughs> um, maybe he'll buy it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's all one cursed mill in every midsummer episode. <laughs> it's all the mills. same one. <laughs> Well, at least in this episode, they go to the mill. In that episode, they you, were you don't really to even see it. Season one episode, yeah, they they don't actually go to the mill. No, not really, not really. And I think uh, Jack Duncroft, he's sick. He can't be a one man farm like everybody else no. in Midsummer. No, so he should sell the farm and go yep. away to yeah. someplace warm. 
Because I think he has TB. I think he's got the TB. (laughs) He probably needs to go to a warmer climate. And that was a grain of truth. Yep. Midsummer Maniacs returns on the 30th of January. We get four episodes this month. We're going to hit unbelievable numbers this month. Yes. And our next episode is season 23, episode four, Dress to Kill. And I'm just saying this right now. We're not going to deal with wokeness or gayness or manufactured controversy. None of that. It's a great episode. We are celebrating the life of these people. Yep. It's going to be awesome. And you get a bonus episode that you didn't even know you were getting until today, which was an announcement episode and the survey results. So we're we're going to announce what we're going to do in the next few months on that episode. uh, We already told you we're going to take a break. In the first couple of weeks of February, oh, God, we need to take a break. <laughs> Sweet Jesus, we need to take a break. Yes. Uh, we've made eight episodes in the last 45 days. Mm-hmm. It's it, whew, We definitely need to take a break. We watched a lot of Midsummer. We watched a lot of other things, but we're going to talk about all that. Later. Later. And the 30th of, we should release that mini announcement episode on the, at the same day as the the episode four the episode, episode four yeah. episodes so, so in a week yep in a week schedule. in a week from from today stay away from sourdough starters people stay safe go to every single earl you see on tv you get magical results <laughs> the fact that those people were fans is it made my week it made your month it made it You're may still have made my year it. it made 2023 so far <laughs> so far yes Never, right, never underestimate the ability of maniacs to be maniacs. Be maniacs. <laughs> All right. Speaking of which, bye maniacs. Bye maniacs. Can I tell you really quickly before we move on to those things about an interesting thing I learned about bread? Yes. <laughs> Mostly because I'm traumatized and I think everybody else should be too. Excellent. By this thing that I learned. So I want to share this is it. This traumatized web searches by Sarah. Yes. <laughs> this is the traumatic disturbing thing I learned that I couldn't fit into the episode that I can't waste. Oh my God. I almost have to leave to go get tea. <laughs> <laughs> it's very quick are you ready my parents can't come pick me up because they're recording my po- their podcast is the best excuse ever yeah i was looking into s- sourdough bread and yes. i was kind of wondering if anybody had ever been poisoned by sourdough starter because yes. I, I secretly think it could be diseased um, <laughs> because it's living and it's in your refrigerator and you have to feed it you know it's kind of weird <laughs> Um, so I was looking into Maybe that. Maybe that's what Gabriel has in his basement. Yes. He, he secretly answers to a starter that's down there talking to him. <laughs> Must kill Tom now. Blah. In most elaborate way possible. Yes. This will please me. I am the starter. <laughs> What I learned about is an alternative to sourdough starter bread, which is called salt rising bread. Yeah, you mentioned this. I think I've had this. Okay, okay. You'd know if you have. Okay. So the the yeast in starter, right, multiplies and grows, and then you use a bit of it, and you keep feeding it, and it multiplies, and that's a yeast, right? It's yeast. Um, but. At some point in history, uh, some crazy person thought, I wonder if there's alternatives to that. Well, they didn't have a starter or a fridge or electricity. (laughs) I don't have my handy dandy sourdough starter. Where will I get some bacteria that I can use in my dough as a starter? That's womp. Hmm. I know. I'll sample the staph bacteria in this veteran's wound. What? And use it to make a starter for dough. No. I'm that's not kidding. Made I'm up. not kidding. I'm not kidding. That's that's worse than the cheese with the maggots in it. Staph bacteria no. from an infected wound 
was used to make a bread starter. Now, I'm not saying everybody who makes salt rising bread, which isn't, doesn't really have that much salt in it anyway. No. I don't know why they call it salt rising bread. I think it's something to do with where you put it when it's rising. Anyway, not all people who make salt rising bread do that. Well, nobody does it except this one crazy person who, this doctor yeah. who decided to do this. They I've got a little organ poisoning in my mouth. <laughs> they don't do that. Ugh. But this guy legitimately thought, hey, if we can take bacteria or yeasts from the air or from the surface of grapes and use that and incubate it into a starter and use it to make bread, wh- why can't it come from someplace else? Ugh. I know a really reliable source of quickly reproducing bacteria. When, when was this? Even the best made salt rising bread t- smells like feet and tastes like bad cheese. It's, yeah. it's an acquired taste, apparently. Yeah. Um, but I can confirm that the bread that was made from this starter, nobody wanted to eat it. No. Not even the rats that he was no. testing it on. <laughs> Oh, but it's such a bad idea. That's so gross. <laughs> That's why I had to That's share. what Gabriel was doing in the meantime. <laughs> trying to make bread from staph infection. <laughs> Ew. Oh. <laughs> He's got corpses down there he's using for starters. Anyway. 